2300 years ago, a Greek philosopher accomplished something that seemed impossible. He determined the size of the moon. This philosopher was Aristarchus. He knew that an eclipse occurred when the moon passed through the shadow of the earth. By comparing the eclipsed moon to the size of the earth's shadow, he was able to state that the moon was approximately one-third the size of the earth. A pretty good estimate, considering this happened over 2,000 years ago. Knowing the size of the moon allowed Aristarchus to use his knowledge of triangles to calculate the distance to the moon. He also understood how the phases of the moon were created. He realized that when he looked at a moon that was half illuminated, that the rays of sunlight struck the moon at 90 degrees to his line of sight. Again, using triangles, he was able to make the first reasonable estimate of the distance to the sun. This is a remarkable accomplishment, and it stands today as a dramatic demonstration of the power of logic and mathematics. Let's use some similar logic and math to determine the diameter of the sun. We need to construct a device that will allow us to measure the sun, a solar projector. Let's construct the solar projector. This device will produce some data we can use to estimate the diameter of the sun. Start by creating a 10 cm by 15 cm rectangle of stiff card. Use a ruler and pencil to divide the rectangle into 5 cm squares. Cut in on the center line as shown from each end. Then fold this card into an open sided box and tape it together. Now make an identical box out of black card. If you don't have black card, color the inside of one box black. The black color reduces reflection. Make a hole in the center of one end of the white box. You now have two open-ended boxes. One is white with a hole, the other is black. Next, cut a small rectangular piece of aluminum. One and a half centimeters by three centimeters is a good size. I used a piece of an aluminum cookie sheet. Next, you need to push a pin through the center of the aluminum piece. Make sure the hole is no larger than the pin. A small hole works best. Tape the aluminum piece to the box with the hole. Make sure the pin hole is centered over the hole in the box. Now tape a piece of graph paper inside the black box. The closer the lines on the graph paper, the better. Tape the box with the pinhole to one end of a meter stick. The pinhole is facing out and the end of the box should be aligned with the end of the meter stick. The black box is taped to the other end of the meter stick with the graph paper facing the pinhole. Again, align the box with the end of the meter stick. The outside faces of the two boxes are now one meter apart. This completes construction and we are ready to use this device to determine the diameter of the sun. So this is the pinhole device we've created to help us determine the diameter of the sun. We have a pinhole at the top here. Rays of light from the sun enter the pinhole. Pinhole, a small enough pinhole acts much like a lens. That projects an image of the sun onto our card on the bottom here. We're going to be able to measure the diameter of that image. We know this is one meter. That's going to give us a similar triangle, a triangle similar to the huge triangle that extends from this point out through space to the sun. Now that we have our equipment set up, let's take some measurements. We need to know the diameter of the sun's image. The graph paper helps here. The lines on this paper are two and a half millimeters apart. And I see the sun's image extends to three and a half lines. 
I made a couple of pencil marks on each side of the sun's image and measured the image to have a diameter of 9 millimeters. Now, let's set this up. The rays of light passing through the pinhole create two triangles. The small triangle ABC and the huge triangle ADE that extends to the sun. These triangles are similar and I know that because the opposite angles produced by intersecting straight lines, like at A in the drawing, are equal. Also, these triangles are isosceles with two equal sides, meaning that their base angles are equal. So we have two similar triangles. Do we have enough information to calculate the size of the Sun? Here is the formula. DE over AD equals BC over AC. DE is the size of the Sun. We don't know that. That's what we're trying to figure out. AD is the distance from our pinhole to the Sun. And thanks to the work of Aristarchus and the many philosophers and astronomers who came after him, we now know that the distance to the Sun is 150 million kilometers. So AD equals 150 million. BC is the size of the Sun's image. It is 9 millimeters. We measured that. AC is 1 meter. That's our meter stick. We have to remember to change to the same units as the image. 1 meter is 1,000 millimeters, so we will put 1,000 in our equation. Solving, we find our estimate for the size of the Sun is 1,350,000 kilometers. Modern astronomers have determined that the diameter of the Sun is 1,400,000 kilometers. Our simple solar projector produced a pretty good estimate for the size of the Sun. If you decide to try this for yourself, you should be aware of some of the things that affect the results. Try to make your pinhole as small as possible. Not so small that you can't see the sun's image, but small enough to create an accurate image. The actual distance to the sun varies throughout the year. Here in the northern hemisphere, the sun is actually closer in the winter than in the summer. Use the internet to determine the accurate distance to the sun for the day you set up your equipment and collected data. The edge of the sun's image is diffuse, making it difficult to accurately measure the image's diameter. You may want to measure a number of images and average them. When you undertake an activity like this, you are connecting with the earliest human innovators. Those ancient people who accomplished seemingly impossible things using nothing more than their minds. We used the relationship between similar triangles to determine the size of the Sun. If you're not familiar with the math of similar triangles, I'll conclude this video with a short overview of this important aspect of geometry. This is an isosceles triangle, with two sides equal. The base is 8 centimeters long, and the sides are 10 centimeters long. The base angles are 66 degrees, and the angle at the top vertex is 48 degrees. If you draw two triangles of different sizes but with identical angles, mathematicians say the triangles are similar. This smaller triangle is similar to the first. Similar triangles have an interesting and useful property. Even though they are different sizes, their corresponding sides are proportional. Here's what this means. These triangles are similar and the base of the smaller one is half the length of the larger triangle. This means that the sides of the smaller triangle are also half the length of the corresponding sides of the larger one. This means the sides of the smaller triangle are each 5 centimeters. This relationship is true for all types of similar triangles. Equilateral, scalene and isosceles. Mathematicians often use a formula to show this relationship between the sides of similar triangles. To do this it is necessary to label the vertices. 
Once they are labeled, we can refer to each side of the triangles like this. AB represents this side of the smaller triangle. A formula based on the fact that the sides of similar triangles are proportional would look like this. AB over BC equals DE over EF. Here is how you can use this formula to determine the length of the side AB. We know that BC is 4 centimeters long. And we know that DE is 10 centimeters long. And also that EF is 8 centimeters long. Our equation looks like this. To solve for AB, we need to manipulate the equation so that only AB remains on the left side of the equal sign. There are a number of mathematical techniques for doing this. In this solution, AB equals 4 times 10 divided by 8. This produces an answer of 5. The length of the AB side of the smaller triangle is 5 centimeters, just as we had determined previously. Using a formula is a good approach when you are working with large or complicated numbers. More science and math related activities can be found at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the projects link.